Hi there everyone, it's Jaakko here. In this tutorial I'd like to take a look at how we can work with UDIMs in Substance Painter and how we can take those uh, UDIM textures and uh, import them to V-Ray in Max and how to utilize several UDIM tiles from Substance Painter. So uh, I have this model here which I created a couple of years ago and uh, this is based on this basically a couple of UV tiles so I'm just gonna quickly throw like this um, unwrap uh, uh, I think it's this so I'm going to take that uh, unwrap so we can see that we have some UVs in here and and the UVs are laid out so that they are in in tiles so I actually used Maya to create this model and I used those uh, big this, uh, auto UVs and then I've just organized so for example this floor uh, this this sort of like the platform it has its own UV UDIM tile in here and then the the other some pipes and those handrails are one tile and so on so I've organized the model into separate sections and in this way we get of course much more uh, texture space for uh, for our uh, model so if it's gonna be when we work with uh, VFX models for example we need a lot of texture space and we need to have a high res textures in there and this is the the best way to deal with that so you just uh, uh, unwrap your model this way and you create these UV tiles, you shift those UVs on on these tiles. So I don't know why Max doesn't show uh, those like tiles, in, I just haven't done that in Max, but but yeah, you get the idea, this is the way that, that you do it, so you shift in one UV square uh, on the right. So right, so just to take, we'll just take this model and I'm just going to export this, so I'm going to export selected, and I'm just going to do the, put it into the 3ds Max export, and we'll call this like a, a generator, uh, like so. Okay, so uh, I will be doing this, and then uh, we'll switch to Substance Painter, and I'm just going to ignore this as some about materials, but we don't need to care about that, so yeah. So let's jump into Substance Painter and so see how we can set it up. So here we are in Substance Painter, so I'm just going to import the model now and the way how you just start is we just create new one in here and then just take the file and select uh, 2020 and we have export in here, so we have this generator we did. So we have this checkbox in here, create texture set by UDIM tile, I'm going to make sure this is selected, so now it creates those texture sets based on UDIM tiles and not the materials, so if you have several materials in your model, this is going to ignore that, so this is going to create the texture sets only based on the UDIM tiles, which is what we want, so I'm just going to hit OK and see that what's going to happen, so it should uh, now create uh, four different texture sets for us, so you can see that now we have the model in here, and then we have these four <coughs> texture sets in here, which correspond to those areas we defined in the model. Okay, so I went on and created these textures for this model and again the workflow of creating these textures is, is pretty similar as normally working in Substance Painter. You just uh, have now four different texture sets in here and and unfortunately at this point we can't really paint across different texture sets but that feature is being developed by, by Adobe at the moment so there's going to be a feature in the future version of Painter where you can be able to just draw a uh, paint uh, across uh, texture sets and and even at the present if you do baking like such as I did the baking in this guy I did pay baking some ambient occlusion for those rusty areas and so on so so the ambient occlusion and all those things they will respect each of them so they will take account so if there's like a some area like the, for example you can see there's some rust on the ground in here for the in this platform and and that ambient occlusion being cast from the other texture tile, so so it this is still uh, treated as a one single model, as a one single object, and all those maps that you generate in Substance Painter, they will respect um, the tiles, so they are aware of other tiles. So that's very very useful. So so th then uh, the way how we can uh, export these textures for V-Ray, I'm gonna. Uh, walk you guys through that so we can go to the export textures in here and we have now like um, we have these uh, different uh, uh, configs in here and these are something that you can adjust and I really recommend to 
I really recommend you guys to get in here and uh, do some edits to this. So uh, I have like, for example, my own V-Ray UDIM uh, configuration in here. And the way how you can config these is just go to configuration. And you have a bunch of these uh, pre-made pre uh, settings here. And you just select like one of them and right click and then you can duplicate this. So you can create a new copy of that so you don't mess up the original. And then I'm just going to go in here and uh, maybe rename this. I'm going to call this like demo for something like that. So now we have this. And then the important part is here is that at the present, uh, 3ds Max has a little bit of issues dealing with uh, the naming convention of UDIMs. So if you use a point, uh, the, the default is that, that you use a point, uh, it, it doesn't seem to be able to read that. So you need to put like a dash in there in order to for it to work. I, it does work if you use um, one of the plugin, one of the uh, HDRI uh, loaders. It, you can get it, you can hack it to work, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. But at this time, let's just go and do this little edit in here. I'm going to do uh, put like a hyphen in here. So that's going to replace that a point, uh, that dot. <laughs> What's that? Like a comma uh, in English. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to put the hyphens in here so um, so now the the way how this has been named is that it's going to give the mesh name and then it's going to give the diffuse and, and the, the texture name and it's going to give the texture set name which in our case is going to be the number the UDIM tile so so then we don't need to like it would be a terrible idea to deal with UDIMs by manually trying to uh, shift the UVs and uh, manually name that's don't don't even think about it just it, this has to be of course automatic so, so I'm just gonna uh, finish editing editing this this um, template now I'm just gonna do like um, go in here and go to export and now we can see that we have this demo in here so I'm just gonna uh, export these files to our destination I'm gonna jump back to max and see how we can import them so now we can see we have all of these uh, different uh, texture sets have their own sets of textures and all of them are named perfectly and ready to be named. So just uh, when you export, make sure you have the right uh, resolution for your textures. So, so I'm going to hit export and uh, jump back to uh, Max. So uh, here we are back in Max. So um, what I'm going to do first is that I'm going to basically set up our uh, V-Ray. So I'm going to go uh, to rendering and make sure that our uh, render setup is set so that we are using V-Ray. So I have now V-Ray, uh, this, this latest update going on here. So I'm doing that. And then I have some lights in here. I'm going to enable those V-Ray lights so we can probably see something more that we are doing. And we can maybe just uh, quickly just check how the V-Ray IPR works. Uh, so let's see. So it yeah, it is pretty bright at the moment. We can probably tweak these lights a little bit like is this the multiplier or uh, I'm gonna drop that. Yeah, so uh, the bit strong, so I'm gonna just drop the val values down a little bit so we're gonna be able to see more more details. So so now we have this interactive uh, preview going on here which is really nice. So the fun fun part. So um, I'm just gonna go to rendering and material editor and slate material editor. I'm really big a big fan of the slate material editor. By the way, it's it's um, it's I'm just because <laughs> I'm a big substance fan. So I'm used to dealing with nodes and and I find this to be uh, much more nicer uh, nicer to use than using the old compact. So I'm gonna maybe like position this model to. I'm just trying to fit everything to the screen. So something like that maybe works. So um, now we can see we have uh, our V-Ray materials in here. And I'm just going to use this V-Ray material, V-Ray MTL in here. And and then now, um, as we have our uh, files, uh, we can just, I'm just going to go and create like, um, uh, try to use this multi-tile. So this multi-tile has a bunch of issues. Um, I noticed from my experience that if you have more textures than 10, like if you have a 9, it works, and if you have a 10, it doesn't work. So this multi-tile doesn't work with more than 10. And still at present time, this has still issues. But maybe um, I'm going to be able to demonstrate how this works. So you can still use this, but there's a better way, and I'm going to get back 
to that in a moment. So uh, let's try. So with this multi tile, you can see first we have file pattern format in here, and you can set different like formats. You have Zebra, Smartbox, and UDIM and custom. And in our case, I'm going to use the UDIM. All right. And then we have the tile one, and you just don't need to care about this tile one. I don't know why it's tile one, but you just uh, hit this button in here, and then you select the texture. So I have my textures in here now. So these are the textures we exported, and I'm going to select just one of them, maybe number one in here. And we're dealing with diffuse, so we can use the automatic gamma because this is going to be sRGB uh, uh, format. So I'm going to just leave that to be. So now it automatically uh, grabbed four of those tiles, and it will, should automatically be set up. So I'm going to drag and drop this to the uh, diffuse map, and let's see. So I'm going to then go and connect this material to our model. So now we can already see that basically our, our diffuse materials are working fine. So then what else we need? We need the other uh, maps. We need uh, our reflection maps. So I'm going to go and do another multi-tile. And uh, I'm going to double click this and again do UDIM in here. And then I'm going to go and select our uh, reflection in here. And now we are dealing with reflection map, and this is uh, should be linear workspace. So we need to override the gamma and put it in one. So now it doesn't try to adjust the gamma. So I'm going to do that. So now we have this, and it should load those four tiles automatically again, and like like so it did. And then I'm just going to uh, try to. There's probably a better way to to handle these nodes, but yeah, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to drag this to our reflection. And we should see now it's like super reflective, but that's still okay. And I'm going to do another one. So go to multi tile again, and again do UDIM, and then we need our uh, uh, glossiness in here. I'm going to again override. It's really important that you don't use the automatic because then it's uh, for the, uh, the, the, the Max will think that it's a color texture and it's not. Uh, this is not like picture. It's uh, data. We're dealing with data in here, so it should be. Uh, like basically like a raw like a yeah linear so um, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna drag this one to um, our uh, reflection uh, glossiness so it's important you use reflection not refraction <laughs> otherwise it's gonna look funny so now we have those so it start to look um, more like what we saw in the painter so now we just need to do our normal so I'm gonna go again do one more multi tile in here uh, again select uh, Gonna just double click that and select UDIM in here, and then select this, and we just select our normal, and again, make sure you have linear workspace. That's really important. <laughs> I can't say that enough. So uh, now I think we've got like uh, four uh, again four tiles. All right. So yes, all right. So it's V-Ray normal map. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take this normal map from here, V-Ray normal map, and then I'm gonna plug this guy in to the normal map, and then. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this guy from here to to our bomb map. So uh, then that should be able to to get the the details. So like so, now it should be plugged in correctly. I'm just going to check those settings, and we can uh, adjust the bump intensity in here. So maybe we want like more more details in there. I'm going to do like three, so that gives us more detail. And by default, usually these settings seem to work, but you sometimes need to go and flip the green green channel in here. In in our case it seems to work fine. So maybe we can just preview our scene a little bit in here. So you can see it it's relatively easy to deal with deal with uh UDIM tiles in this is in this way. So so this method works if you if you have a less than ten UV uh UDIM tiles. But um there's also other way. I'm going to show you guys the other way. So if we go in here, I'm going to do another, another here, and let's say I'm just going to grab all of this and uh, delete them. So we have this V-Ray HDR in here, and what this does is basically the same thing as the multi-tile, but this is really handy, and it automatically takes everything into account, and it also automatically is linear workspace. So, so you need to. Uh, remember to, if you're dealing with color textures, you need to make sure that you use sRGB in here, but I'm going to show that to you in a moment. So first, let's just take our diffuse map. So I'm going to go and uh, 
go in here do you diffuse we can just pick any of them it could be like one of them and then i'm going to open up this one and in here we have like um, this udim number and we can just replace this by these uh, uh what are these called these these marks and then i'm gonna write udim into here so this is the syntax so you replace the udim number udim tile number with this and it automatically calculates it makes uh totally picks all of those and assigns them probably i'm gonna plug this to diffuse now so you can see that the color is washed out and why it's washed out is because this agri is linear by default so we need to change this color space to our srgb so it automatically uh, understands that this is a color data and then i'm just going to duplicate this process i'm going to select the other one and i'm going to go in here and do bitmap i'm going to select uh, uh, this closeness in here i'm going to pick that and then i'm going to go in here and use this syntax which is you deem to do that and it gets like super fast if you just have like a so now we, this is automatically linear so we don't need very so this is um so what was this again this was the glossiness so i'm gonna grab this and do this reflection glossiness in here and again i'm gonna do another one and <clears throat> i'm gonna select that and uh, select like uh, maybe reflection like so and again yeah do the same thing like so uh, Okay, so now it automatically do that, and it's gonna uh, do this reduction reflection, and the normal map is gonna be the same thing. So, yeah, uh, you get the idea anyway. So, so th th this works f fine if you have uh, no matter how many Udim tiles. This this just always works. So, and it's also really I really like this uh, this more because uh, most of the maps that we deal with are in linear workspace, so we don't need to go and change every time that override in texture loader so this is like um, much more uh, nicer I think a little bit faster workflow because you can also just take these na file names and you can uh, grab and uh, you can copy paste them and then just change that name so it's like if you have like tons of different materials like we have sometimes have it's very um, you know it's very nice to work the only problem with this is that uh, this doesn't work with uh, max the asset tracking so if you have like a if you want to strip the path and you want to send your file to your client, then uh, this doesn't really, uh, you can't strip the path. The, this the asset tracking isn't aware of uh, V-Ray because maybe it's a third party plugin. So unfortunately it doesn't work. So there, there could be a work, work around how we could make this relative path if we deal with uh, some, uh, if, if you have to share some assets with our clients. But but uh, V-Ray, it's absolutely just fantastic tool. It's, it's one of the best renderers out there, I think. And and Substance Painter is very well integrated with with V-Ray. So the maps that you export from Substance Painter, they just look brilliant. They just look almost the same. So I hope you guys find this little uh, tutorial useful on how to use V-Ray uh, from Substance Painter materials. So this was Jakko. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.